Good evening, every uh, good morning, everyone. I should say it's one forty in the morning out here in California. I'm used to doing these podcasts uh, in the afternoon, so this is the first one that I did, you know, in the wee morning hours. But in any event, um, so the title of this uh, episode is about uh, Judge Joe Brown. Many of you remember him uh, from his uh, time as a TV judge for 15 years, Judge Joe Brown. Well, he's since retired, but Judge Joe Brown made an appearance on Mark, Le- Mark Lamont Hill's uh, show on a black network channel. I think, believe it was on Friday evening. And um, they were discussing the Bill Cosby case. Uh, you know, Dr. Cosby had his wrongful conviction, and then his eventual release from prison. And uh, Mark Lamont Hill made some gross allegations and just told lies. Oh, my God, it was it was embarrassing. But Judge Joe Brown, to his credit, he schooled uh, Mr. Hill, schooled him pretty bad. And it was embarrassing for Mark because, you know, Judge Joe Brown has been in the law profession for decades. This man is seventy; just turned seventy-four years old yesterday. He's been, he's been a, uh, an attorney, or was a judge, and so he knows the law, and he studied law for decades, for over fifty years. So you, some Johnny come lately, don't know what you're talking about, Negro. Trying to, you know, trying to correct him, it didn't go well for him. He looked foolish. He looked foolish. And, you know, Mark, you know, told lies that, you know, Cosby, you know, was convicted of um, of rape and drugging women, which is not true, which is not true at all. He said he gave quaaludes to women knowingly and they took them with the uh, intention of having consensual sex. That's what he did. He did not drug them. He did not rape them. He gave them quaaludes with the intention of having sex with them. They knew they were quite, they knew these were drugs. They knew what was going down. So Mr. Cosby, Mr. Cosby was at fault for giving them drugs, but they were at fault too for taking the drugs. He didn't put, he didn't put a gun to their head. He didn't force them to take the drugs. So stop with these lies and stop with these gross rumors. The man did not rape them and he did not drug them. He offered them drugs. It's a big difference. Big difference. So let's so let's just get that out there. But you know, the white media, they keep telling these lies, and Mark Lamont Hill is a gatekeeper for the white media. And you know, he just keep going on with this lie. I think probably it's because, you know. Uh, years ago, uh, Mr. Cosby tried to get Mark Lamont Hill fired from his professor job at Temple University. Both both men are from Philadelphia, so, you know, um, but a lot of people, I think a lot of people in Philly are riding with Dr. Cosby on this one and not uh, that Sambo, Mark Lamont Hill. Um, and he's a Sambo because... Um, he want to, you know, go out his way to see a black man and, and just keep up the lie and want a black man to rot and die in prison, but don't say a damn thing about Cardi B. Not a damn thing. Not one thing about Cardi B. Not one thing about what she did. I mean, are you serious? But you know what? That's the, that's the, the Democrat ran liberal media lies that they that they keep going you know convict a black man you don't have any proof no proof we can just make make things up as we go along just make it up we don't have to have any proof we can just make it up and convict a black man but then uh uh a woman could could say you know i robbed and drugged men and uh set them up to get uh raped by transvestites and it's crickets it's crickets. She gets to do an interview with the um, with the with Joe Biden during last year's uh, election last summer. She does an interview with Joe Biden. But you know what? Birds of a feather flock together because 
he's a, he's a sexually assaulted women too. So I, I, I get it, you know, but it's BS and we know it's BS and we need to call it out because it's not right, but that's the world we live in in the white supremacist world. It's crazy. Don't make any sense, but, and, and it's crazy, but be that as it may, um, Dr. Boyce Watkins <laughs> sent out a tweet saying, watching Mark Lamont Hill debate Judge Joe Brown is like <laughs> watching Shakari Richardson uh, racing Lizzo or something to that effect. I may be paraphrasing. And so, which it was. I mean, it's like Shakari Richardson racing, racing me. I mean, you know, and I'm not nowhere near as big as Lizzo. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm small, a lot smaller than Lizzo. But, you know, it, it was. It was embarrassing. And so Mark Lamont Hill, in response, uh, sent out a tweet. My dear brother, you are you are broke wealth coach. You you are uh, you are failed academic academic professor. Um, you worked you wrote the worst rap song in history. Um, you failed at everything that you that you that you've ever done and stop worrying about me and concentrate on taking your, your next L. And, you know, that I'm paraphrasing the tweet, but it was something to that effect. And it's like, bro, someone's in their feelings. Someone that are someone is really in their feelings because you got schooled on your show. So now you coming after Dr. Boyce Watkins. And again, you telling lies. He's not a wealth coach. He's a finance professor. The man was a finance professor. He was at Syracuse University, I think, 13, 14 years. He has the black business school. He has business ventures. He's teaching millions of black people around the globe how to gain wealth. How has he failed? He just got married two months ago to a beautiful professor, Dr. Alicia. I listen to this man every day. I've listened to him every day for the past six years. And he's a solid guy. So you're telling lies. And that's that's border, that's slander. You can get sued for that. That is slander, bruh. And it ain't cool. And you know, your lies are dangerous. It's, it's, it's dangerous that you're going up here, you're sitting up here trying to, you know, be, be, a, be the overseer for the white man by telling lies on black men. That is not cool. Not cool at all, bruh. The same thing can happen to you. So while you up on your up there on your on your high horse, they can knock you right down. Look what happened to OJ. And sadly, look what happened to you know to Bill Cosby. But we know Bill Cosby, that was that was trumped up. That was just a miscarriage of justice all around. A miscarriage of justice. But you could be next, bruh. Don't think you're exempt. Just because white people love you now don't mean they're going to love you next year or maybe six months from now because they can knock you off that high horse. So be careful how you come in at people. You know, I met Mark Lamont here. Well, I um he spoke out here at Berkeley about, um, about was it five, about five years ago, six years ago, 2015. He spoke out here at Berkeley. And uh, my wife, she was my girlfriend then. She attended Cal Berkeley uh, as a graduate of Cal Berkeley. And so he spoke. Um, he spoke there. And so he had a book. Forgot the name of the book. It's called Nobody. I think that's the name of the book. I, I, I'm, I may be mistaken, but whatever. But uh, he had a book to come out. It was a great book. And, you know, Mr. Hill is a smart brother. He's very smart. Very hardworking dude. I give him credit for that. And so um, I purchased his book. We purchased his book, and he signed it. And um, I know I try to, you know, just chat with him for a few seconds. And he seemed like, you know, I didn't get the the um, a good feeling about him. The few seconds that I met him, he seemed like he's kind of arrogant, kind of, you know, uh, one of those uppity Negroes, 
you know, you know the ones, you know, that's that that want to kick that want to tickle the white man's, you know, you know what, and you know they think that, you know, just because they on TV, just because they have high stature in uh, academia, and they write books and they have speaking engagements, you know, that they're better than other black people bourgeoisie and i hate that i hate that with with our people uh, that's one of the things that drives me nuts it irks me to no end i hate it hate it with a passion but anyway he kind of rubbed me as that type of a uh, uh, negro that oh whatever you know i'm this and that and you know okay you know uh okay negro you're 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 you should be glad you should be blessed to that i'm signing your book and that you're you have a few seconds to uh, to uh, speak with me, and I took a picture with him. Matter of fact, me and my um my wife, who's like I said, was my girlfriend then. We took a picture with him. He was nice to, to take a picture, so I really appreciated that. You know, he had he had on a Colin Kaepernick jersey, um. So you know, he didn't have to do that. So now that I appreciated that, you know, he took the time to take a picture with us, but just you know. And maybe he was short on time and because the line was long and he couldn't sit there and chop it up with me. But I noticed he did chop it up with a few people, but he wasn't trying to, you know, you know, uh, sit there and, you know, stand there, chop with me for a couple of minutes. And, you know, I get it. You know, he's a busy man and, you know, he's on a tight schedule, but he just kind of struck me as a kind of an arrogant, pompous uh, a-hole. He did. And. A few months later, oh, actually, not a few months, a couple of weeks later, a couple of weeks later, Dr. Boyce Watkins was out here um, at Laney College in Oakland, small college uh, in um, in Oakland, and he was talking about black, he get uh, was doing a thing about uh, Black Wall Street. And that was the first time I've heard of Black Wall Street. The very first time. Me and and then again and again, my um my wife who was there, my girlfriend, we attended this session with Dr. S with uh Dr. Watkins, and there were vendors selling t shirts. And I bought a t shirt and I still have it to this day. And uh it says I love black women and it's all black and it has the the black, red, and green colors, and it has the uh, continent of Africa on it beautiful t-shirt bought it from a brother that was selling it. nice t-shirt and dr Watkins said that after the uh after the session was over that he would he would stay and sign and take pictures sign autographs and take pictures with anyone who wanted to do that who anyone who wanted to take a picture or sign an autograph or, or just talk to him he would wait until every person wanted to do that every last person that wanted to do it, you know, had a chance. And I thought that was cool. And I just that just showed me the the um the contrast between Mark Lamont Hill and Dr. Watkins. Dr. Watkins seemed like a stand-up guy. I didn't get a chance to meet him or take a picture with him because we were pressed for time. We just, you know, went to the event, um, bought a t-shirt, and it was a lot of people, so we didn't want to wait around. I wish we could have. But we didn't. But um, I just thought that was cool on his part that he said he would do that, that he would wait around for every last person that wanted to take a picture with him and for them to sign their, you know, get an autograph, his signature on something. I just thought that was cool. And he didn't have to do that. And that just goes to, to show what type of character Dr. Watkins has. He's a stand up guy. I, I, you know, like I said, I didn't get a chance to meet him or speak to him. But I've been listening to him for for six years now. I'm enrolled in the Black Business School. I've listened, you know, advice that he's given. I've taken it, you know. I've, you know, invested in the stock market because of him, um, and because of him, I'm starting my own business. Him, and Dr. Claude Anderson, and uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Those are my three um, people who are inspired me to start my own business so like i said uh that goes to dr Watkins character he really cares about black people now now mark lamont hill i can't i won't say that he don't care about black people but i think mark cares about the prestige 
of getting a check and being seen and then caring about black people. He don't put black people first. Let me just say that. I don't think he 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 gives a damn about putting black people first because it's all about Mark. It's all about him. It's all about his, you know, him, his prestige. And 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 I, and I get that to a certain extent that you know you have to make the money, but when you when it comes at the cost of tearing someone down and not really being there for your people, then I have a problem with that. Then you you like another white supremacist to me. You could have the same skin color as me or what so have you. Because we know that all skin folk ain't kin folk. And Mark Lamont Hill definitely fits that bill. But Judge Joe Brown schooled his ass on his own show. So he was in his feelings. So he took it out on Dr. Watkins, you know, calling him broke, spread, you know, just telling lies. You already told the lie about Bill Cosby, spread that, that, on uh, the, that in you, those innuendos. Then you come back and you're going to tell lies on another black man. Like really Negro. You really need to get over yourself. You really do. Because it's it's you you're making yourself look bad and you're and you're disgracing our community. Because white people see this and they like this. White supremacists, they love this. Oh, you know, he's doing it, he's doing the work for us. We just sit back and let him just say whatever, make up lies, and he's speaking for us. He don't even care about his own community. If he don't care about him, why should we? And it just, it hurts our community. It makes a look. It makes us look bad, and it's sad. And it just, oh, it's it it's it's not right. It's classic PTSS, and I keep bringing this up: post traumatic slave syndrome. It's the Willie Lynch syndrome. It's the crab in a barrel syndrome. It's all of the above. All of the all of the above. It makes no sense. It doesn't. Just to please white people, you're just going to tear someone out and, and spread lies? Are you kidding me? Because you can get your facts straight on your own show and a, and a, 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 um, a retired judge who's been in the legal profession for over 50-some years told you what the law was and the man couldn't get a, a word in edgewise and he owned you because he knows the law, Negro. You don't. Are you kidding me? Just because, and that's another thing about Mark. He strikes me as a know-it-all, too. As one of those know-it-all Negroes that, you know, they always write, you're wrong. Even though they don't have a clue of what they're talking about, they still know more, more of a subject than you know. But they don't have a clue of what they're talking about. Not a damn clue. So he strikes me as like strikes me as that too, as a know as a pompous know it all. So, and I I kind of wish Judge Joe Brown didn't go on the show, but I'm glad he did because it just exposed Mark as for the liar and for the two faced think that he really is. So he got exposed. So I'm glad uh, Judge Brown did go on there in a way, because he because like I said, it exposed Mark as the two faced think that he is. But anyway. Um, yeah, we just got to be careful. I mean, you, you got to get your facts right. You can't be out here spreading lies. I'm not saying Bill Cosby is a perfect man. I'm not saying he did everything right because he didn't. That and that's criminal behavior right there. If anything, you could probably get, get, uh, get him for, uh, for uh drug possession or contrib or not drug possession but what for um using drugs the uh with the purpose of uh of something I don't know I don't know but it wasn't right what he did should he had gone to prison for uh rape and um drugging women Hell no, because he didn't do it. The prosecution could not prove it. If you want to get him on, you know, like I said, uh, uh, a 
administering drugs illegally, then I don't know. Then, okay, maybe that. But as far as rape and and sex and um and drugging women no 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 you have no proof there's no proof that he did it because he didn't do it only in america can a can an innocent black man be exonerated of a crime they didn't commit only in america and yet you have a, a rapper out here a young lady that admitted, that openly admitted and bragged about drugging, robbing, and setting men up to get raped by transvestites. And there's crookeds. No one says a damn thing. It's, oh, business as usual. Oh, she do a, she can interview a uh, presidential elect or uh, presidential candidate Joe Biden. Try to get black people to take their booties to the polls. It is such BS. And I'm sick of it. Such BS. But then again, this is America, like I said. This is America. You know, since when has the justice system, it wasn't written for us in mind. You know, two days ago, two days ago was America's uh, Independence Day. This wasn't our independence. We were property. We weren't considered human beings. On the, during the 4th of July, 1776. That wasn't our Independence Day. It was Amer It was white people's independence. The colonists' independence from, from Britain. But it wasn't for us. They didn't have that day in mind for us. When Thomas Jefferson wrote those words, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and, and, and uh, endowed by the inalienable rights by their creator. To have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those words weren't meant for us. Those words weren't even meant for white women. They were meant for white men that look like them. People who were considered property, which were my ancestors. Not even white women. So... Don't get it twisted. There's been many a black man in this country and there will be many more that will go down for something they didn't do because a white woman claimed that he raped me and you don't have she don't have to have any proof, any evidence, no no DNA, which is right is which is damning evidence. She don't have to provide no DNA. All she gotta say is that Negro raped me and he'll go down. Jesse Washington, Waco, Texas, 1917, was lynched, body was burnt to a crisp, and they tore his body limb for limb, and they sold it, and they, and they took pictures of it, and they sent the postcards around the country. Um, Black Wall Street was destroyed, and many people were murdered because a white woman claimed that a black man touched her. Rosewood, Florida was destroyed. Destroyed. Forever. Because a white woman claimed that a black man touched her. I'm going to go back further than that. 1912, actually. Oscarsville, Georgia. Two teenage boys were tried, convicted, and put to death, lynched. Because a white woman claimed that they touched or raped her. And they burnt and they tore the town up and killed more people. Emmett Till, 1955. Was beaten. Murdered. Because a white woman said or claimed. And later, later she admitted that she lied. She admitted after Emmett Till dead, uh, dead and buried. His mother dead and buried, didn't get to see justice for her son, never, his descendants would never see justice. She lied. She admitted that she lied. 60 some years later, Emmett Till was beaten 
and his body was thrown in a river. He was beaten beyond recognition because a white woman claimed he whistled at her. Not that he touched her, that he whistled, whistled at her. He whistled, not touched, whistled. 1955 in Mississippi, look it up. Emmett Till, 14-year-old boy, was murdered. I mean, the list goes on and on. And I'm there are a lot of cases out there that I haven't mentioned and that we probably don't even know about. But Bill Cosby, powerful black man, America's TV dad in the 1980s, taken down because a woman claimed that he 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 sexually assaulted her. He touched her. He drugged them. They didn't have any proof. Any proof. This happened in the late 60s, 70s. Where's the proof? You couldn't go to the police. The case went nowhere. He admitted to offering them drugs for sex. He didn't drug them against their will or rape them. He did not do it. He did not do it. So stop telling those damn lies. He did not do it. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court, no, he didn't do it. That man spent three years of his life, three years which he cannot ever get back. Three years of his life unjustly in prison for a crime he did not commit. The people that throw that threw him in prison need to be in prison themselves. Yes, they do. It's a shame. That was a miscarriage of justice. And now people want to come after, you know, Miss Felicia Rashad, Howard University, you know, condemned her comments, you know, tweet tweeting when she uh tweeted that uh uh a miscarriage of justice has been righted, or something to that effect. You know, Stephanie Mills came to her defense saying, okay, if y'all want to, you know, remove her from the, the dean of, uh, of fine arts at Howard, then give the money back to Bill Cosby that he donated to y'all back in the 80s. I think that's fair. Right on, Stephanie Mills. Right on, sister. I agree with that. Because it's, it's BS. Y'all love Bill Cosby in 1988 when he and his wife donated millions to HBCUs more than any in entertainer, black entertainer in the history of, of, uh, of entertainment. More than any black entertain entertainer. That was 33 years ago. I remember that. 1988. He donated millions to HBCUs. Now, Howard, you want to talk about, you know, uh, condemning Miss Felicia Rashad, your dean of, uh, of fine arts, for supporting her friend? Are y'all Negroes serious right now? Okay, if y'all should fire her or condemn her or whatever, remove her from her position, give the money back to Mr. Cosby that he donated to y'all in 1988. Give him his money back every cent. How about that? Stephanie Mills is actually absolutely right. It's sad when, when, when white people take us down, but we know that. We know that, and we're used to it. I mean, it is what it is. It's white people doing what white people do. They've been doing it for, for almost 500 years. But when we have black operatives, when we have, you know, co black COINTEL pro agents, doing the work for white supremacy, it's, it's so disheartening because we have enemies on, 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 on all sides. We have enemy, enemies foreign and domestic, and it's our domestic enemies that are doing us in, that will do us in every time. It's our domestic enemies. Your Mark Lamont Hills, the people at Howard University, your Gail Kings, Those are 
operatives for white supremacy, for white supremacists. They will do us in every time, every time. It's many more than Gail, than Mark Lamar Hill, Gail King. Those are just a couple. There's many more out there. Oh, you're Roland Martins. How can I forget him? There's many more out there. And it's a damn shame. Just to get close to white people. You take down your fellow brother and sister. It sickens me. It's so sickening. But it is what it is. And we got to realize that not all skin folk are our kin folk. Not all skin folk are our kin folk. We have to beware and be aware. We have to have our head on the swivel. Because we have, uh, we know, we can see our foreign enemy from a mile away. It's our domestic enemies that we can't see. They are in our family. They are our so-called friends, colleagues, live, among, live amongst us. Those are the ones we need to be careful of. Those are the ones that are dangerous. But with that in mind, I'm going to hop off of here. Just want to share my thoughts on this. Um, let me know what you think. Comment on this episode. Share it on social media. Get it out there in the algorithm. And let's have this conversation. I want to hear what you would think. I want to see what you think. Let me know what you think. All right, y'all. Till next time. Take care. Love y'all. And God bless. I'm out. Peace.